Jeff Levy is now the head coach at Mississippi State. So that whole thing, as we dive into this, what's the past couple of months, I guess, now yeah. been like? You know, it's, it's been good. It's been fast. It's been a lot. I feel like we've gotten a ton accomplished in, in just a short amount of time uh, from a staffing standpoint, roster standpoint. Uh, now being seven seven workouts into spring ball, it's gone incredibly fast, but it's been a lot. But feel great about where we're at, feel really good about where we're going, excited to, to keep it rolling. I know no matter how long you're here, you could be here 20 years and there'll be insane attention to detail on everything you do in every practice, but especially that first spring period yeah. when you get your first shot at a program, what's the balance between trying not to drown folks in too much but also trying to maximize install and maximize culture building and everything you're trying to do to build a program yeah i think it's just making sure man we're doing a great job of coaching between the whistle you know doing a great job of coaching uh, effort and fundamentals doing a great job of coaching man how we're going to do what we do you know at the end of the day the execution right now is not going to be quite what we want uh, we'll get to that point you know mistakes are going to happen because of all the newness Man, how are we finishing, how are we straining, how are we striking? What's our pad level? Fundamentally, what are we doing? Are we playing with great energy and great toughness? All the things that are a choice, right? That, that's what we want to see. And so we're constantly straining that part of it and making guys understand, man, the practice field's got to be our edge. We've got to create an edge on the practice field. And how we do what we do matters. So that's, that, that's been where it's, where, where it's all started. When you say that to someone who doesn't go to many college football practices, they're probably out there thinking, well, a practice is a practice. And sure, practice to practice, there are similarities that you would see. But when you say, I want an edge at practice, what are the specifics that you look to build? Yeah, I want guys getting every single rep. You know, I think it's really easy to say and hard to do. But how are guys getting better when they're not in between the white lines? So if they're standing and watching a rep, are we taking that rep? Are we getting better getting the rep? You know, again, creating an edge on the practice field, there's a lot of different ways to do that. Um, our physicality, our mentality, our toughness, our energy, our passion, our effort, everything that we're doing from that standpoint matters. But man, when I'm not going, when I'm not in the rep, am I getting better? And so that strain is to me where there, there's a big chance to have great growth with, with our entire team right now. When this job came open, your, your name had been mentioned with jobs before. This is the one that you end up taking. Were you in a position mentally where you felt like, hey, I'll never know until I do it? Or were you in a position where I felt like I've been ready for a few years? That's the shot, though. Yeah, I felt really confident about sitting in the chair. Knew that there was going to be newness. Knew that there was going to be adjusting. Knew that uh, there still is the, the first time part of it. But felt incredibly confident about where I was and then being able to put the pieces around me to be able to go chase it the way we're going to chase it. So. Um, you know, we'll, we'll find out this fall, but feel, feel good about it. What are some of the things that you think, you know, on one hand, I'm super confident in this. I've done this so long. It's like breathing. It's like second nature. That stuff notwithstanding, what are some of the things maybe in the other compartment of I've never done this. So this is going to be new. This is going to be new. Like, what are some of the specific things you've circled and said, yeah, that's going to be interesting. That's going to be fun to experience for the first time. Yeah, I, th I think when you just talk about like kids day to day schedule, when you're talking about when we're going to eat and when we're going to have study hall and when they're going to go to class, are we going to be morning format? Or are we going to be afternoon format? And then digging into the detail of that to make sure I mean, we're maximizing these guys opportunity to have a great day. And truly, you know, our expectations for these guys to do their best every single day. Well, how are we setting them up for success? And so diving into that detail and making sure we're, man, we're making decisions that are best for, for our players and for our student athletes. I think diving into that has been been fun. The way that you guys want to play offense yeah. and uh, the, the tempo that your offenses have worked at. How much attention do you pay to how you hire a defensive staff to complement that? Yeah, I think it's important. You know, I, you look at our defensive staff right now, um, with Coleman obviously being our defensive coordinator. Uh, he's got great familiarity, uh, worked together uh, prior, and he understands, you know, how, how we're going to play offensively. You look at a guy like Matt Barnes, who I've got great familiarity with. Uh, him and Coleman had worked together. He's in full understanding of, of what we're going to do and how we're going to play. Corey Bell coaches our corners. Uh, we were together at UCF, so has lived it, has done it. So I think having that sense of fami familiarity of how we're going to play is, man, that's important. And uh, our guys have that. They've all been a part of some incredible defenses. Uh, obviously, DT, David Turner has been 
a part of this league uh, for so long that, man, he's seen it all too. So feel great about that part of it, and it was definitely a huge part of of uh, what I wanted that side of the ball to look like. What is what is Showtime about? I mean, it's, everybody talks about it in yeah. the building. Yeah. Explain to folks who, who haven't been familiar with that. What's that about? Yeah, Showtime's about, man, that we do everything that we do, right, in, in a calendar year for just a few opportunities. And those Saturdays need to be a show. It needs to be, it's, it's Showtime. And uh, for our guys, man, I want them to understand the buildup of that is, man, it's a privilege, but it's going to be a lot of fun. You know, Saturdays in Davis Way, there's not going to be anything like it. And I want our people to understand that. And I want them to see a product on the field that is, is a show. You know, we're going to play fast and fearless and physical. We're going to be incredibly aggressive on both sides of the ball. And we're going to put a product out there that, man, people are going to want to be a part of, young and old. And that's, uh, that's the thought and that's the goal. What has been in this state already as a football coach taught you about how things are supposed to operate here? Yeah, I think having familiarity with recruiting, you know, is, is the biggest part of uh, – maybe a leg up that I was able to have getting in the state and having some some understanding of how things work inside the state and understanding our proximity to players you know again there was a ton of positives in taking the job and getting the job man but I think one of the biggest things was proximity to players you know five hours from where we're sitting right now we can fill the roster and go compete for championships there's nothing better than that we don't have to fly all over the world moms and dads can get here student athletes can get here coaches can get here um, and so having that, I think, is a huge advantage. Uh, we're going to be inside out from a recruiting standpoint because we can be. And uh, that's going to be a huge part of, of our, our build. Has it, uh, I don't know how to ask this, has it surprised you watching, maybe from afar, um, the way that staffs at multiple programs in the state have operated in the past? Like, I, I'll tell you, so I'll speak for myself. I've looked and sometimes I've been surprised that people either here or at Ole Miss haven't harnessed the in-state crop of talent more, staff to staff. Right. You ever look at that and say, like, man, why has no one ever really put a stranglehold on talent in that state? Or is it just, <clears throat> hey, if I ever get the shot, maybe I'll, maybe I'll do it my way. I think if you look at the best football teams where we're sitting right now, those rosters were dominated by in-state players. And so I think Dan actually did a great job of that when he was here of nailing in-state recruiting. And you look at all the guys that are playing in the NFL from state right now, those – you know, 90% of them are in-state kids that state did an incredible job of, of recruiting, targeting those guys and making sure that, again, the best players in state, man, they come to state and they have an incredible experience and they're able to go chase it at every single level and, you know, every, every area of life. So, again, that's going to be a huge part of our build. I, again, I think the best teams that have uh, been on the grass in Davis Wade, man, that those rosters were, were heavy in state. So talk about your personal life here for a second. Yeah. You, um, you're in a, a new seat here. You've waited for it and you've got it. So I get a lot of different answers on the importance of work-life balance. Some guys are here sun up, sun down and beyond and don't really need it. In fact, some people argue you cannot have balance in life if you want to succeed at the highest level of this yeah. industry. Other guys say you can. You've got to be strategic with it, but you can have it. So what kind of balance have you found in your life right now? Yeah, I think in all reality, I'm, you're working all the time because, you know, when you're at home, you're as present as you possibly can be and, and you make ways to, to have those moments, but you're still on the phone recruiting. You're still on the phone handling things because of uh, you know things going on inside the organization every single day. So work-life balance has not ever been something that, that I've talked about. Uh, I want to find ways to create uh, opportunities for my guys in the building and myself to make sure that we know our dang family and, and we're around our family and we have opportunities to man go see our kids play baseball, go see our girls play volleyball, whatever it is, create those chances. I think that's one of the, you know, the biggest advantages of, of living in a small town. You know, is man, you can pop over and, and go catch a game and you're back in six minutes at the office, you know. So those things, I, I think, create some normalcy for our life, which I absolutely love and will never, ever take for granted. Uh, but the balance part of it, man, is coaching football at the highest level for these guys' age group, uh, being in this league. So that, that's part of it. And it's all about, you know, having support at home, which, which I've got a, a ton of, which makes it, makes it good. When you looked at Mississippi State before you got here, and then you looked at it as you walked in the door, like describe what you saw from a coach's vantage point. Yeah, again, to me, the two things that are incredibly critical 
and taking a job where you know you can have success and have sustain, sustained success, proximity to players, support. You know, we're going to walk in that stadium every single Saturday and there's going to be 70,000 cowbells and the place will be on absolute fire. Um, and then proximity to players. So to me, when you have those two things and you've got competitive advantage, now you've got to create energy, you've got to create hope, you've got to create vision, create trust, and then give yourself a chance to go sustained by the product you put on the field. Uh, but when you got those two things, to me, there's not a lot else you need. You know, 100 yard field in the weight room, let's go. Is there, are there other guys out there or maybe other programs out there? You're not trying to copy anyone, but you, you model this after them or this after that, or is it it's just you? It, it's, it's us. It's we. It's who we are inside our building. Uh, it's, it's who we are here in Starkville, and, and uh, that, that's exactly who we're going to be. I know there are a million and one things to do when you get started here and some of it you probably have found your footing a little ways and then others you still know we got a ways to go what are some of the things where you can't do it overnight and it's it's more of a sustained process like what what are some of the bigger picture things that you can't get done in the first spring period yeah i think roster management you know making sure that we have the the perfect pieces in place to go do what we want to do um, that's going to take a little bit of time I do think with the way the portal is set up now, you have an opportunity to flip it maybe a little faster than, than before. Uh, so we're going to take advantage of that. We've already taken advantage of that. I, I think we've brought some really good pieces in uh, this spring, and then we'll do that here in the next cycle as well. So again, I, I, th I think that's the biggest, the biggest piece is just making sure we, man, we bring in the right guys uh, class after class to give us a chance to go sustain. You guys saw some immediate traction when you got here. Like, how'd you pull that off and how important was it to, to make as much noise as you could in the, the limited runway you had yeah, when you first got here? That, that was huge. I, I think we had to take advantage of some excitement that was going on with the change and, and having the opportunity to, to go sign a really good high school class and a number of uh, 14 days uh, is about what it was so felt great about that uh, again you know it's so hard in this league to be able to go count on 18 year olds to to play at a really high level and that's why I feel great about the first class we signed this 25 class obviously will be huge for us continuing to create momentum and then being able to fill voids and fill needs with uh, with the portal like we are. How long does it take to familiarize yourself with what your recruiting board is going to be? And how, how much overlap is there as an offensive guy especially? How much overlap would there have been in having known 2025 20, kids and being following 2025 20, kids for a few years from other places? Yeah, I think uh, it's beneficial. I think what's a little different is my, my stops before um, you know, or at the last stop, we weren't inside the state and we weren't here much. So that uh, I don't know how advantageous it is for, for me today, uh, but I do think we've done a really good job of making sure we've gotten around guys, we've gotten guys on campus, and we're taking advantage of some of the momentum we've got right now. I think guys are excited about playing here. Uh, again, we've got a, a, a staff that's full of energy, that's full of juice. Uh, that are about the right things and I think young people right now are feeling that and seeing that as they get on campus. If you were to hit the rewind button 10 years on your career and just take me inside your mind in 2014, yeah. how did you see the timeline playing out for you as a coach? Yeah, you know, I was at that point, similar to, to today, was trying to be incredibly present where, where my feet were. Uh, knew that at some point, felt good about some point having an opportunity. Uh, that was the vision for, for myself. Always wanted to be a head coach at the highest level. Um, you know, and, and for me, uh, it was, man. It was about learning. It was about creating value every single day for the staff that I was a part of, for the guys that I was coaching every day, and knowing that at some point I was going to be able to take that next step and, and take advantage of an opportunity, and that's, that's what I'm fighting to do. Describe for folks who love football but they've never coached before at the head coaching level especially how different is it just you know being with your guys in your room and being on a grease board and being on the practice field versus now you're the face of a program yeah. and you do stuff like this yeah. and you go out and you speak and you go out and you fundraise and that's not on the field but it's an integral part of yeah. your football program operating at the highest level how different a change is that for you you know it's different just from the standpoint of you're just at the end of the day man you're responsible for so many more folks and you are responsible to make sure that you're pushing the brand forward um, and, you know and, and that that piece is different just 
everything that goes along with it. But at the end of the day, you're still you're a leader of, of young people. Now you're a leader of everybody inside the building and you want everybody to fit off you. So having great energy and, and I've been fortunate from the standpoint, never had a bad day. Uh, you know, going to have great energy, feel like going to have great perspective, going to be thankful and grateful for opportunity. And, and that's that's how I want our building to be every day. When people walk in, man, they're they're, uh, they're happy. They're walking in the door and ready to get to work. What's some of the best advice you've gotten in this profession about taking this job? And don't change. You know, the biggest thing I, I think is I think so much of myself, who I am today, 40 years old, being the head coach of Mississippi State. Uh, the reason I am the way I am is my dad was my head coach in high school. I saw how he interacted with young people. I saw how he cared for young people. I saw how he led uh, every single day in a really consistent way. And man, it was never perfect, but uh, he had great perspective and he had great appreciation for what he got to do every day. And people in the building always took to that. And so uh, whether it was Andrews High School, a town of 9,000 people or being a head coach in the SEC, to me, there's no difference. Uh, from that standpoint and so being exactly who I am every day and that's that's what I'm going to try to continue to be. Yeah, it's really interesting you mentioned it that way whether it's players or coaches some guys tend to think when they get elevated to a premier position all of a sudden you got to do more than what you've been doing. You got to be 120 percent of what you've been. Th these are talks that you have to probably have with players a lot. You'll have to have it with staffers. How integral as a part of your job is it to remind folks, I have you here because you already showed me what you're capable of. I just, I just need you to keep doing more of what you've been doing. That, that's what it's all about. We talk to the guys nonstop, talk to the staff nonstop. Man, let's all of us just do our job, just do our piece, and everybody's incredibly capable of doing just that. And if we can all do our job at a really high level, but it just is our job, then we're going to end up liking the end result. And so constantly rehearsing that and feeding that, I think, is, is really important. Everybody talks in the abstract about how much the sport's changing, which it is all around sure. us. If you define your characteristics as a head coach, is there any quality or is there anything that you like to do that you worry another five years won't fit in, in the way college football operates? You know, I, I really don't. You know, we talk about our culture. Everybody throws around the word culture. and characteristics of our program what we want to be inside the building every single day is fun tough competitive accountable it's that simple i mean we all got started in this game because it's supposed to be fun we're going to enjoy the doing it's it's really hard it's supposed to be all right but tough all right competitive and accountable those are always going to be parts of this game of this sport and that's that's the reality of it regardless of what the landscape looks like those things are always going to last and so uh, again, sustaining matters to me. Sustaining here at State matters in a big way. And so that's that's how we're creating the culture. That's how we're building it. And, and that's what we want it to look like today and 10 years from today. Uh, in my world, everyone just wants to define a win-loss record as what success would be for a program. Yeah. In your world, it's a whole lot more intricate than that. So what would success look like year one and just in general what is a successful mississippi state program yeah i want for at the end of year one to people for people to say man these guys are trending up and you know what whatever that looks like that that's the expectation that's the hope and the goal for us is this program's in really good hands they're trending up they're continuing to build man they're going to build something here that's going to have a chance to sustain and and I think we all know what that looks like, having the chance to go be really competitive, um, win a bunch of games, and, and, and do a great job recruiting. And I, I think with those three things happening, then we're going to have a chance to, to do that at the end of the year. How many things in the sport right now are changing in the way that, that you feel is maybe outside of your realm of like intimate knowledge? How many folks, therefore, do you need to have in your ear to make sure, hey, you, you got to keep me informed on this. And, and you over here, you got to make sure I understand what that means, because I don't have a background in right. a lot of the stuff that's going on right now. Right. There's constant change right now. So it feels like, you know, every two weeks, every four weeks, man, something else is changing. So being kept up to speed and understand that's going to be the landscape of it right now until we get to, to a different model, whatever that looks like, and just being ready to adapt. And I, I think that's important for, for me, for our entire staff, for administration, for everybody. Adapting to whatever it is that's going on, making the most of it, and, and finding ways to create an advantage. 
When you guys are going through spring, are you someone that's of the philosophy that I'm going to throw as much at players as I can, knowing a lot of it's going to fall to the ground, and then we'll pick up what didn't stick the first time and we'll try it again in the fall, or is it more a uh, kind of a steady build for you? Yeah, I mentioned it a little earlier. Like The execution part of it right now is not going to be exactly what we want it to be, what I want it to be, because we're putting a lot on them, and we want the guys to get stressed mentally and physically while we're on the field so that they understand that we are creating our edge on the grass between the white lines. Uh, while at the same t same time, you still want that balance of being able to uh, have some confidence in guys and guys have confidence in themselves. So it's a fine line. It's a daily conversation. It's tweaking installs as we go every single day to make sure, man, we're, we're balancing that that uh, that act and, and, and getting the most out of all these guys every day. Outside of winning on Saturday, which is what we all see, what are some of the hidden from view most rewarding aspects of just coaching at this level yeah i i, I think when you you get some one-on-one -on -one time with these guys and and their true appreciation for connection and their true appreciation for relationship and and knowing man you you at the end of the day you really do have their back and and there's great connection there's great trust and uh, you're able to pull a guy through a, a tough situation uh, regardless of what it's in uh, and they're able to come out on the other side of it and know that man, a big part of that was because of connection and trust and, and belief in somebody. So those are the, the, the fun wins, you know, behind the scenes that nobody sees. Do you ever um, you stop to ask yourself, like, with being a head coach in the premier conference of college football, a lot of people are going to look to you to be a voice on things. Mm -hmm. And some of it you may be familiar with, some of it you may not, but they're going to look to you to be a voice on that. Um, if I were in that position, I'd, I'd become really, really like careful with how I articulate things. But that's not my nature. I would just be kind of paranoid on, on the outset. Like, right. how, how much did you think about that as you took this chair? I, you know, for me, it's just all I want to do is talk about state. All I want to do is talk about our guys in our locker room. All I want to do is talk about our vision and where we're going and and uh, and sustaining as a program. So. That's where I'm putting all my focus, all my energy. We talked about it just a second ago, right? There, we got a lot of people in the building that are keeping me up to speed on everything that's changing every other day. And, uh, you know, for me, it's, it's all about the team creating an advantage through those things. But, man, I'm, I'm going to concentrate on state, and I'm going to concentrate on getting the most out of my guys every single day and giving them an incredible college experience. When you started to put together your program, everything from nutrition to sports science to strength and conditioning, um, how long ago did you have a plan in place for how you wanted those things to look when you got the shot? Yeah, it, it's been a it's been a process. Definitely had uh, uh, many a conversations with myself and and many a thoughts on, on how wanted the staff to, to look at the end of the day from a department standpoint, uh, a support standpoint, and knowing exactly what we wanted it to look like. Administration has been uh, incredible. And, and sharing a vision and, and knowing exactly what we need to give our guys a chance to go be successful at the highest level. We're right in the middle of that conversation right now, and I'm incredibly thankful for that with Zach and Terry and our team. Um, but, but again, there's been a ton of thought going to that before, you know, getting here at the end of November. How much of that is in place versus how much is still kind of a work in progress? Yeah, there, there's a ton of it that's, that's in place. We're really, really close. Our people, again, have worked really fast to be able to build uh, something from a staffing standpoint that that gives us a chance to to give these guys every advantage they need, every resource they need to be able to go do it uh, at the highest level. And again, that's a credit to administration uh, giving me that support, giving us that support, and and being able to put it together. You're talking to a lot of folks who live in the state of Mississippi right now, but a ton of folks will see this who have never even visited the state of Mississippi. They've never experienced the Egg Bowl. They've never, they don't know anything about the in-state rivalry. They just know they see it probably the day after Thanksgiving or Thanksgiving night once a year. You've been a part of that. Describe what that rivalry is like. Passion. You know, people that, that are fighting uh, every single second to win, and, and winning matters, and winning's a big deal. And, and there's great passion, there's great pride in it. And so that game obviously is going to be a fun one, uh, but there's great passion and great pride inside Mississippi State. And um, a, a lot of people that, uh, that want us to be successful. And we talked a little bit about it, but support. You know, we've got a ton of it. That's a huge advantage. 
and uh, we're fighting every day to make everybody proud. Jeff, love it. We appreciate it, man. Appreciate it, brother. Thank you.